going to take time and it starts with the babies. But we've been saying that for 30, 40 years but now. Nobody trying to, black people are just ain't trying to build no families, man. They they out here just doing stuff, I, my, yeah. and no we, and yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. You know? It, it needs to be some systematic processes systematic in place process, yes. to lead to the solution. We can't just say it's about the babies. Okay, what do we need to do with the babies? Do we need to we, go get 40 acres? Do we need to do this? Do we need to get our own schools? Boy, what do we need to do? It's, 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 Don't just say, I say this. I we, say this what do we time. need to do? I Put say it, this. I say this all the time. And give that to everybody and say, do this. People, this is Will Ransby, Role Players TV. We got some special guests here. Two special guests here. We got Khalil Brown and we got Ronald James. Very influential people in the community. We got Khalil here as an HBCU grad, a Bachelor of Architecture, Howard University. Uh, he's also got a master's degree from Georgia Tech right here in Atlanta. Married, father four, involved with construction, real estate, cannabis for over 25 years. Mr. Khalil Brown. <laughs> All right, we got Mr. Ronald James. The real big dog. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to get up to hit him. <laughs> Current CEO, Sovereign Crown Capital, certified long-term political and social activist, Pan-African member. Currently. Doing things big in Africa. Nice. All right. So what I want to start out with is uh, a couple of questions. I want to start out with you, Mr. Mr. Ronald James. Sure. Um, so this, this whole series is about uh, rebuilding families, generational wealth. And we were talking on our way here about how families black families it's hard for them to really come together and talk in a way that says our instead of my i you know my house my car i'm gonna go and buy my house i'm gonna go and buy my car instead of family saying i'm gonna go and buy my house we're gonna go and buy our car okay and we're gonna build a business together under one roof we were talking about you know buying a mansion you know, instead of everybody buying different houses in all these different areas, you know, but buying one mansion, and everybody living under one roof and building. Why is it that black families don't are not motivated to, you know, build in this way? Well, the black family born have been broken through the process of chattel slavery. Our language was destroyed. Our our self-economic engagement within the, co the family community have been destroyed. But most of all, our unity that made us a force to be reckoned with in any field you want to go into have been destroyed. Unity. Unity. Mm -hmm. So I, I remember somebody said one time, black people don't even know how to organize crime. That's correct. You're right. Mm, never heard that. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. We have been miseducated and are still being miseducated. Yeah. A male have a role and a female have a role. If it's two parents, you don't understand that role, then you have no family. Mm. You have bodies there, but you don't have a father head, a mother head. Children don't understand their role. Mm -hmm. The family cannot educate the children. So you just have an uh, uncoordinated group of people living together, calling themselves a family. But they are not a family. As a people, 
we was enslaved physically, but the pants at the, the, the Africans on the continent, they was they wasn't put into chattel slavery, but they were put into mental slavery. Mm-hmm. They were put in mental mm-hmm. bondage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they are still in mental bondage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they wasn't never in chattel. Some of them was in chattel slavery, but ninety percent there was put into what, mental bondage. They well, took they took the, the language from them also. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the weaker mm-hmm. tribes that really wasn't involved in the chattel slavery. Yeah. It's, the, it's the weaker tribes who mm-hmm. really like were kind of like sellouts mm-hmm. who sold out the the major tribes, which basically let's see, well, I think it was three major tribes. It was. Uh, well, I'm talking about ancient tribes. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the ancient tribes of Israel. Mm-hmm. One, the, the biggest, obviously, was Judah, mm-hmm. Yehuda. The other tribes, you know, the, you're talking about, and I'm talking about how it translates, how the ancient tribes kind of Hell. branched out in all, yeah. all of the, mm-hmm. the, you know, the tribes in Africa mm-hmm. right now. You know, they created their own. Little splinter groups. Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's, that's what families did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like if you, like if your son, mm-hmm. right, he's, he's 20. Mm-hmm. He's gonna have a have get married mm-hmm. probably and have kids. Mm-hmm. He's gonna start his own tribe, mm-hmm. and he would name his tribe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's under a big a bigger tribe in everybody's family. Mm-hmm. That's what they see. This is how the black family is just so divided right now. We ain't no tribe no more. No, mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying. And I forgot what it was. Somebody was talking the other day how they uh, uh, the uh, Europeans. I forgot which comp country but when they had that certain meeting mm-hmm. i can't think of it all right now and then they they created the borders within africa mm-hmm. that was we're going was, back in time before there were borders that, that was the destruction yes of it why do we need a border yeah, yeah. here yeah. and then why you right. why is it this because Look, spain european, what is european union for yeah german because no they, they were they they created the borders because yeah. they were claiming certain you know territories and that's that's why i was telling my wife she's you know she's from colombia mm-hmm. and i was telling my wife i said do you really think that 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 Spanish is your native language? She actually thought that Spanish were her, was her native language. Mm-hmm. I said, you see that museum that we Hebrews, go to. Hebrew is your language. Thank language. you. Mm-hmm. You see, you see the, the the museum we went to, and they showed the the white guy in this and they saw how he discovered. Mm-hmm. I said, no. Traveling I said, okay. Scary. Let me just put it this way: Columbus, Christopher Columbus, named Columbia. Mm-hmm. That's why it's Columbia. It was named after Christopher Columbus. I said Christopher Columbus was was commissioned by the Queen of England mm-hmm. to capture y'all mm-hmm. into slavery and use the the labor free labor to build Colombia. Mm-hmm. I said you're speaking their language mm-hmm. with the two popes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she was yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. We I was just reading that the other day. <laughs> like, no. We, yeah. I said, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. show you. <laughs> yeah. I was just reading how one of the popes. I forgot which one. Um, actually signed off and said you can make these certain folks slaves mm-hmm. but not these and of it's course it was the dark us you know the darker you know yep. not them you know exactly. you know because we always talk about that a lot of these podcasts and people in general we love the barbershop talk whatever talking about yeah. the problems we have but nobody's talking about solutions that's what i was right. saying so i was just saying we were when you were kind of off to the side um i, was, I asked him like do you think there can ever be Black unity, because we've been talking about it since the sixties. Wow, now I, I think I recorded that. What did he say though? Can we take it back? What he said? Um, he was like, "Yeah, you know, he had a positive." It, but he said it can it can be. Yeah, he, he said it's gonna take time, and it starts with the babies. But we've been saying that for 30, 40 years ain't now. Nobody trying to black people are just ain't trying to build no families, man. They they out here just doing stuff. I my yeah. and no we and yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, you know. It, it needs to be some systematic processes systematic in place process, yes. to lead to the solution. We can't just say it's about the babies. Okay, what do we need to do with the babies? Do we need to we, go get 40 acres? Do we need to do this? Do we need to get our own schools? Boy, what do we need to do? It's, 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 Don't just say, I say this. I we, say this what all do we time. need to do? I say, it, this, I say this all the time. And give that to everybody and say, do this. Uh, there you go. I say this all the time. The first, the first thing that needs to happen is... You see all these black people in the, in the great up ghettos and in the, in, the, in the community, even in the in the upper communities, middle class. Mm-hmm. You know, they still have this mindset, this hip hop culture, this this. That's whole, what I was just gonna. Say. You jumped it right into <laughs> what I was thinking. We he says it's about the babies, and we yeah. start the babies, and then we then 
you know, hip hop, yeah. you know, which was started positive at first. And then it became gangster killing you. Take Percocet. And who's the biggest? Rapper? Have the, have 20 baby mamas and you and you the man. Who's the yeah. biggest female rapper right now? Sexy Red. Okay, I couldn't even tell you. I know it's you don't one, need you know, to know, bro. I know Cardi B was a stripper, so I know it's a yeah. sex. Whether it's Cardi oh, B or Sexy Red, promote. that's what they promote. Then shake your ass, bend yeah. over. They're gonna promote Roma. Sexy Red. Who got the wettest ass? This. Yeah. Who can suck the best? This. And who's listening to the Sexy Red? The little girls. The girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So music is a part of the it. The babies. That's but, what they're attacking. But then it goes, you know. Uh, well, Mr. James, Generation Two, they came at us with the music. Mm-hmm. They come at us with the education. Yes, that that creates the plantation mm-hmm. Negro mindset, which you yep. were talking about. Yep. And then they came, um, as you see with that movie. Uh, I mean, that show Snowfall and many other yep. The Wire. That show, mm-hmm. yep. they came at us with the drugs. Yeah. So it's about the babies, but how do we protect ourselves from the crazy music, the propaganda in the media, the uh, the drugs, what you said, the bad food. Education, because the first the whole that, fraud of the whole pharmaceutical industry yeah. with these the whole you know, the fast the, food. The, yeah, oh know. my God! Don't talk about that. That's true. That's the, so much so the beast. The, the initial yeah. the initial yeah. process yeah. of change. I live pressure and everything else. Yeah. The initial process of change is first to attack the minds mm-hmm. of black people. Yeah. Because that's what was lost in the first place. They took our books. They took our education. They took our mm-hmm. language. They took everything. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So renewing the spirit of their minds, it has to be a deprogramming and a reprogramming of their minds to get them to understand and make them aware of who they really are and where they really came from and what you represent and what you're supposed to be representing. And, you know, Christians say and, and, and you know, I love having conversations with Christians. You know, I love, I love Christians. I love having spiritual conversations with them. But I said to a pastor one time and I said the first step to turning around the black community is under this black people understand that first morality and and true uh integrity starts with spirit yeah. it starts with spirit of god it starts with it starts with that. Love, everybody everybody has the spirit of god i love everybody. that word integrity yeah i love that word everybody has the spirit of god mm-hmm. okay now you say there are bad spirits and there are good spirits. I I just think there are spirits. Mm-hmm. The only thing that 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 makes a spirit bad is your mind. Mm-hmm. Your mind kind of opposes this good spirit in you and makes you do these other things. But if we the if first we get the spirit, we understand that look, this is where you came from. This is who you are, right? Mm-hmm. You came from this before this, mm-hmm. right? So let's get back to that. How do you do that? First, you got to get the knowledge, education, the wisdom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to get the wisdom and understanding, and mm-hmm. then you get the knowledge. And when you get the knowledge, you get the power. Mm-hmm. And then when you get the power, you're able to teach everybody else mm-hmm. with that power. Mm-hmm. And I ain't talking about power and strength and muscle. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about power to mind. Mm-hmm. When when we get these young people like my son, mm-hmm. he ain't got no baby yet. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm slowly giving him that spirituality, where he came from. I'm giving him the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. Mm-hmm. However you want to flip those. Mm-hmm. Once you get that, then you have the power to counsel and teach everybody else mm-hmm. that comes into contact with you. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to deal with people, challenging people. Because mm-hmm. the biggest challenge of everybody in this world is dealing with people who oppose them. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. And that's and that the young, opposing force. Yeah. The opposing force is the one that's the one thing that attacks that spirit. Mm-hmm. And when that spirit is attacked, you can't move forward. Mm-hmm. Now I agree with you on that. Um, because I hear from my, you know, a couple of my children and other youth, you know, my friends, sons and daughters as well, but they're having a hard time, which one of the things you just said with dealing with people. And the workforce and life yeah. with the interpersonal skills um, because they weren't outside playing like we were yeah. when they were little. They've been on the phones and yeah. on the computers mm-hmm. and uh, you need those skills. You gotta yeah. have it, man. Yeah, because that's that, that. Socialization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're not being socialized, then you have a, you can in, intermingle with anybody in the race mm-hmm. if you've been socialized. 
that means you know how to give and take. Mm -hmm. Without knowing how to give and take, then the least thing is might be might seem aggressive. But if you're not as socialized, socialized, you can walk away from it. Mm -hmm. See, that, right. That's that's social, yeah. right. That's that social. Right. Um, that's that social. That's a social richness. Mm -hmm. That social wealth mm -hmm. that you need to because mm -hmm. it's not about money all the time. Mm -hmm. It's about building your wealth as an individual. Yeah. Because if you, as an individual, and you have that integrity, you look rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, yeah. like. Well, yeah. Money will attract you, yeah, because you have this integrity, you have this personality. It's yeah. like, you know what? I like Mr. James, man. Mm -hmm. I like Mr. Brown, man. I like his energy, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you did you see how he reacted to mm -hmm. what she said to him and how he mm -hmm. just he handled it so well? Yeah, I'm sure you guys have come across this, Mr. James, and, and well, um. When you're in a store or at the library, I know people don't go to libraries, but when you're out and about at a, an event or a concert, or whatever. I already know, I'm going to throw it out there, people just come up to you, you know, they're intrigued yeah. just by how you carry yourself. They don't even know you from a can of paint mm -hmm. and just, so what do you do or where are you from? And so you carry yourself. You carry yourself because yeah. you said that we've built up that, mm -hmm. Yeah. you know, through mm -hmm. either our parents or through our experiences yep. in, in life, you know? You can answer that. Yeah. You can go ahead and answer. It's fine. But we were talking about solutions mm -hmm. earlier. Um, do you think part of that? part of teaching those social skills or any other skills is going to come from, because obviously our education system hasn't done the greatest job. I won't say it's totally failure, but are we going to have to homeschool ourselves? Miseducation. Mis mis that's one of our downfalls. How do we combat that? What's the solution what to that portion to of it? It's to look at education, not just on a level of receiving a degree mm -hmm. or a certificate, mm -hmm. but education should be explicitly for knowledge and take that knowledge and be alone in it. But if you don't have knowledge, you just have education, you're still a buffoon. Simple as that. An educated man is a wise man. Educated buffoon. It's ignoramus. You know, you can have a doctor's degree if you're ignoramus. Yeah. If you don't know who you are, if you don't have that spiritual quality that your education should place you in. The foundation that's, that's that's that you were talking between, about. That, that's, yeah, that's the difference between common sense and yeah. real. Mm -hmm. And uh, common sense and book sense, I want to say. Ask mm -hmm. how many you go to a a classroom, just put it in high school, you don't have to use a university, just a regular high school. Who's teaching no kids at high school? You go in there, you can see you have a business class. Who's teaching that business class? What experience does that person have in business outside of the school? Have you ever operated a business? Mm. Probably not. So they just get the books and teach what the books say, but they can't relate to the students and applied. My grandson came home. He wanted to know about algebra. He was confused. So what I did, I sit him down and I showed him how to apply algebra with something in the real world. I applied it to reality. He picked it up just like that. And scored the highest in his math class. Nice, nice. Okay. That's all it took. You got to know how to connect with knowledge. If you can connect with, if you can connect with knowledge, uh, and I do it all the time. I tell a lot of people, well, I want to know about this. I said, you got to study physics. Physics, I said, yeah. I said, Bitcoin is pure physics. Cryptocurrency is pure physics. I said, physics? We thought it's accounting, money, no, this is physics. The best financial is engineer. He understands physics. He understands. Uh, I never heard that. He understands uh, the different laws, of uh, a uh, Metcalf law, the law how to value a network. Look at Zuckerberg. He understood Metcalf law. He built the network, and that network is worth billions. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you, you speaking you speak nuggets, man. You got I know. I love. I love. <laughs> you, at, you can look at uh, that one, Zuckerberg. Look at Amazon. Mm-hmm. What happened to Amazon during the pandemic? Everybody shut down. What's Amazon did? The network exploded. Exploded. Mm-hmm. Look at uh, BioNTech. They built the network for the vaccine. They exploded. Science. If you go back to NVIDIA, before that, NVIDIA was, they was doing good. Mm-hmm. But then it came out with that GPU, that graphic. Mm, the graphic processing unit. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Overtook the CPU with who? Yep. Intel. Mm-hmm. So they have a monopoly now. Mm-hmm. But you, you, if Moat, you look, if you, if, if you yeah. look, if you mm-hmm. look at every technology mm-hmm. out there, it don't have to be machines and stuff like this right here. You know, technology can fit in a ring. I mean, not just computers and things. They, they, it's not just technology. Look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin has technology out there. The highest technology. It ain't no stopping Bitcoin. I don't care who like it, who don't like it. You cannot stop it. If you look at the white papers of Bitcoin, you will see. This I'm is glad King you, Kong. I'm, I'm glad you're bringing it up because I think we were talking earlier about generational wealth and yeah. mm-hmm. about how mm-hmm. how not enough of us are involved in Bitcoin. It's probably because of misconception, misunderstanding of it. Um, and I, I don't want to dive too much into it, but if you can give us a brief like synopsis of why Bitcoin is... I don't want to say why it would be better than a major stock for the future, but why why would Bitcoin be a good uh, starting point for families to build against uh, Bitcoin to start like like really as family together okay. with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uncorrupted, un- uncorruptible. It's indestructible. That means you can't destroy it. You can't corrupt it. So those two alone, with value creation, Bitcoin is a store of value. Mm-hmm. Value, with the other two, you have what I call super money or super currency. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't control it, a bank can't control it, a country can't control it. I remember you telling me about a book called Super Money, right? Yeah, it's a book called y'all, Super Money. Role players, y'all remember that. There's a book out there called Super Money. Get that book. Okay. I have a, to check that out There's myself. a book out there called Super Money, and I'm going to tie it in with Bitcoin for you. Mm-hmm. Super Money is an analytical process to understand the monetary, the global monetary system, you know, the money supply. Because without liquidity, Everything shuts down. Liquidity is available money. So Bitcoin itself, the more liquidity out there, Bitcoin rise. But lately, Bitcoin have been rising. If there was liquidity in the market, Bitcoin rise. Without liquidity in the market, Bitcoin rise. The stock market go down, S and P, Dow Jones, whatever. Look, Bitcoin rise. Why? And that's why I don't close. Why? Stock, the stock market's closed, but Bitcoin, you can like buy the, the, Sunday, it's, Monday, it's, Tuesday, it's Wednesday, 20, Thursday. 24-7. But the principle behind Bitcoin is you can't just print that money without anything backing it. When I got out of high school, gold was about $20 an ounce. Now, pretty close to $2,300. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. being held back. Mm-hmm. But Bitcoin is liquid, what I call Digital gold is more valuable than gold. You have about 200,000 tones of gold that have been mined since the beginning. You have about 57,000 left to mine. Bitcoin right now is about, have developed the value of gold, about 10% of it, about one and a half trillion is in Bitcoin, about 14 trillion 
in gold. Within 10 years, Bitcoin will overtake gold or less, 10 years or less, maybe two, three years. I want y'all to listen to this now because everything that he's told me so far <laughs> about any stock or any coin or whatever, it did perform the way it did. You know what I'm Okay. All right. What, what's what's going to happen with gold is we have 900 trillion in assets worldwide. The whole world assets up right now. It's about $900 trillion. So, Bitcoin right now have encompassed about one and a half trillion. About nine percent. Not nine percent, nine tenth of, of a percent. Okay. If once Bitcoin encompass about that mean Bitcoin is going to it's going to be the black hole it's going to suck these assets in it's like you think look at a black hole Bitcoin is that black hole all these assets out there Bitcoin is going to suck it in once Bitcoin suck in about 150 trillion of this world wealth Bitcoin will be worth 10 15 million per coin per Man. coin right now it's about Early, I looked at it, it was about 67. Mm -hmm. It's swinging between 68 mm -hmm. and 75 mm -hmm. in the last week or so. Mm -hmm. But you have a halving coming up, what's called a Bitcoin halving is coming up next week. Well, week after next, on the 22nd of April, called a Bitcoin halving. Yep. And what that do is built into the protocol. It will be no more than 21 billion Bitcoin ever there 21 million but so so how would you okay so that's a lot of information um this is this this is a lot of this information that you're saying in super money that is, is it's it, there but it's on an analog level and that, super, that means like somebody like, like super you, money gives you the understanding of value mm -hmm. you really Getting to understand what a value is, that's what super money is about. The book is called Super Money. Mm -hmm. It lets you know the liquidity in a market. Liquidity is available money, you know, this can be moved around from source to source. That's liquidity. Mm -hmm. The liquidity right now, uh, with the interest rate raised at 5%, kind of pulled the liquidity back a little. But for the last 15 years, the liquidity have been super high, and that's because of zero interest. You have, what, 5% interest now. So the big factor that's affecting Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is infl inflation-proof. The dollar is not in inflation-proof. There's nothing back in the dollar. Mm -hmm. Since 1971, right? It's 1970, really. 70, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 71, but Nixon came out. Yeah. The world was demanding so much of their return back in gold because the dollar was falling and they wanted gold. They didn't want that dollar. But Nixon. Nixon. So you I was just about it. to say that. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah. Once he took away the gold standard, mm -hmm. I mean, you could, any currency becomes like, like fiat. you can create, anybody could have created. Mm -hmm. Call it fiat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they forced yeah. all the countries with the military might of this Yes, country, with the military might. Yeah. They forced Forcing. all the countries to accept the dollar mm -hmm. as the, mm -hmm. Reserve curves. And now some of those countries like was it is it Ecuador or Argentina? What they're like, yeah. We we gonna go on exactly. to Bitcoin. Like <laughs> Yeah. You know. Uh, yep. They call BRICS, the got nations out there called BRICS. Mm -hmm. They uh Brazil, China, they India. Are fighting the, the Western powers. Mm -hmm. it's the, but first being about six came in Brazil, China, India, and Russia. I uh, forget that. South other. Africa. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now you have about Twelve have came in this cycle, but others want to come in. Mm -hmm. If you let all the nations that want to come into BRICS into BRICS, the United States already have right now about fifty nine percent of that power. If those BRICS countries come in, the fiat dollar is on the down though. It's it's not long. It's not gonna happen overnight because yeah. of the military might. Yeah. It's still things that yeah. that certain agency they go in and they are the hit hunters yeah. and they kind of mm -hmm. slow things down. Yeah. But Bitcoin is uncorruptible. That's the good thing about it. It's uncorruptible. Anybody can own it. 
All you have to do is understand it. Bitcoin is like the NASDAQ. All, all of them combined. Mm -hmm. You can build a business on Bitcoin. You can have it as an investment. You can uh, store value. You can transport a wealth. You know, mm -hmm. if you bought a building and you got a hundred million dollars of Bitcoin, that means you can take that hundred million dollars and go anywhere you want to. You, you can't carry that building. Right. Michael Saylor always yeah. says that. You can't, yeah. He always that's, says that's that. That's what I like about it. <laughs> yep. You cannot carry that you building. You can't carry that building. You cannot carry that Rolls Royce anywhere. You and might have to get up and run fast. All you need is your digital wallet. And as uh, like you were talking about. Digital that, currency. Yeah, that military power yeah. can also come up physically mm -hmm. on your building. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and destroy it. And destroy it, you mm -hmm. know. They can't do that to, to Bitcoin. They can't do it to Bitcoin. Do you think, and speaking of generational wealth, do you think, I read somewhere, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you're much more uh, knowledgeable about this, that uh, the dollar loses about 8% to 10% either per year or every 10 years in value yeah, due sure. to them printing all sure. that money. Yeah. Do like you think that the, there's a correlation, a direct correlation with the dollar, the value of the dollar falling and the... The increase in the value of Bitcoin, or it could, or that's or, it's a it's a direct direct correlation in that, but also the dollar. I put I put it this way: mm -hmm. the debt of this country oh, is they, about thirty. They always talk about this debt. Thirty they ain't four trillion. Pay off that debt. I don't even think they have a trillion. plan to pay no, it off. Never. That's the whole. That's gonna be sixty eight trillion in a minute. That's the whole plan, and you're going up about three trillion per year. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? You gonna have a jubilee, worldwide jubilee? You are the most debt of the country, but you gonna just make sure that these other people holding your debt just gonna fall to same thing Nixon did. Take it or leave it. Yeah. And they're forcing countries right now to pay back in the dollar, the inflated dollar, not the real dollar value, but the inflated dollar. And the inflated dollar, and they tell you we have 3% inflation. You go to the grocery store. Mm -mm. You go to a uh, service station. Much more than that. And and I see myself, my grocery bill. Mm -hmm. I go to the store and buy groceries, and I know what the price was last week. It's not not no three percent for the year. It's thirty five, forty percent. Yeah. In certain items. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I look at one item, sugar, and you look at who producing the sugar. Four pound bag of sugar, where well, it used to be five, they dropped it to four before they dropped the price. It's, it's four pounds now. So you go there, it used to be four pounds of sugar, dollar seventy nine, dollar eighty nine. Not ten years ago, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Five pounds of sugar, dollar mm -hmm. eighty nine. It's five, four fifty now at the average store. So you tell me you had three percent inflation in three years. That sugar price doubled. <coughs> mm. Price doubled in two years, so that's inflation. Now the liquidity there is there because the Fed said, "Okay, they're gonna do quantitative easing." So, quantitative easing means money gonna flow in the system. So the Fed's trying to do money. Uh, quantitative easing and the banks about to fail the banks are going to be forced to do quantitative easing the fails are other than that the whole thing is going to collapse mm -hmm. if, they don't, if they don't put that liquidity out there this economy is going to collapse not just the real estate market mm -hmm. the housing market it's going to be industry wide but Bitcoin is not going to collapse Bitcoin is going to be the it's going to be the Pac-Man. It's like the, it seems like it's the equalizer. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Because, like so, Denzel's movies. Yeah. It's like a, almost a, it could be a, speaking of wealth in yeah. generation, mm -hmm. it could be an equalizer yeah. for third world countries, for minorities, whatever you want to, you know. See, this is what needs to be talked about. 
Okay, yeah. we, you know, and we have to understand I, Bitcoin as a community. Yeah, and I ain't look. I ain't knocking other other podcasts out there and other you know people doing. But uh, you know, all I'm seeing right now, and you know, y'all probably hate me for this, but I'm seeing all everybody talking about relationships, you know, and how 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 women mistreating men and how women women just want money and trying to be the next Kevin Samuels. Next, yeah, Ke- next Kevin Samuels. That's mm-hmm. all I'm hearing in these podcasts. Nobody's talking about building black families. Okay. No, they're talking and, about Diddy too, though. <laughs> yeah, they talking talk about, about Diddy. That's a lot of talk about Diddy. Yeah. But but this right here, this conversation that Mr. Mr. James is having is is key because a lot of the questions that I was gonna ask, you answered them in what you just said. But it's a question that I had here. Um, well, we first when we okay when we were coming here when we were talking before we, this started, we were talking about <coughs> how. We had a conversation about black families not willing to invest in each other, live with each other on the one roof and build, right? Like, like my 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 daughter right here. Okay, mm-hmm. she gets married. Uh, you know, and they say, okay, well, dad, you know, we want to save some money. You know, can we just stay with you for a year or two, save some money? You know, help each other out while mm-hmm. we're here. Of course. Uh, in my mindset right now, mm-hmm. I'd be like, y'all can stay as long as y'all want. Because the, in order for us to really build a family legacy, and people don't want to, people are so uncomfortable with saying building a family empire. Why are you uncomfortable with saying that? It's possible. Mm-hmm. Like I was telling my brother who's in Arizona right now, I said, bro, why, why don't you just come here, man? Mm-hmm. I said, you, y'all are planning on moving to Arizona here. Why would you go, why, why are you in your uh, fiance talking about uh, buying a house separate from me, way over there. When y'all can just come here, stay here for how long ever you want. We we discuss some things as a family and build as a family under one roof. And then when we get the millions and millions of dollars coming in per month, then you can think about having a house somewhere else. But you probably don't even want want to want to. You probably want to go and buy a bigger house and us stay in the same house. Right, yeah. I think that makes me think. Or, of or, or, or a bigger piece of land to where your house is like right here, my house is right here, and we're all in like this whole big old one hundred acre estate that we just bought, and we like right up the road from each other. Mm-hmm. That's how you build. But what I mean, and we were talking about if Bitcoin is the key to building black families, right? We need to learn about Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? And 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 do it. Would you recommend that these young people, in the, the, this generation of what is it? The generation? What is it called? I don't know if they're. Generation Z. 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 Or, Z. Or they Z. might be Z. even a new one under that yeah. too. It's getting close to yeah. another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A few what? years from another one. Huh? Is it Generation Z or Generation Z. whatever generation yeah, it is? About to evolve into yeah. another one. Yeah. They need to learn this stuff. And would you recommend that young people? What I just said. Would you recommend in order to build black families? Families, because you know in the biblical days. When families came together, they was one to one tent. Yeah. They was all in the same area. You know, they when family when when if my daughter marries this boy from this family, the family come together and they start to build as one family. You see that with even today with the other ethnicities that I you know I have they always Asian live friends, one, they live Indian, under one, eight, they Mexican, live under one roof. They, they live in under one roof. But I don't know somewhere down the line us we got taught. And you I had that. Get your I had up. that mentality too, too, though. I just. I did too. It took me a I while changed. to get out of it. I, I changed. changed. Yeah. Cause like you said, I you changed. would have your daughter. I would have. Him. I would have. I was yeah. like, we were taught to like go to high school, get to college, get out by 18, 21. Go, go get, get your, your own, own. Get your own place. Yeah. I don't believe in when that. When I, I grew up, no more yeah. when I grew up, I think I was the last generation of extended families living together. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. the extended families from. I said 1958. Uh, right at the time, some of us still sharecropping. But when the extended families lived together, they could work a plot of land. Yeah. They could make it grow. Yeah. The security is, is Bitcoin. It's, Bitcoin. it's period. Yeah. It's like, it used to be, uh, I would just want to kind of have this thing on the side. And mm-hmm. nah, uh-uh. Nah, it's yeah. like, it's almost a must right now. Mm-hmm. Or we going to lose. I hope y'all, I hope y'all listening. <laughs> hey. I hope y'all listening 
to 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 everything that Mr. James said and Mr. Brown said about Bitcoin. And I'm learning from this man. So yeah, Mr. we James well is, we all learning. Yeah, and, and and like I said, it'll be some books and and we'll I'll talk with them afterwards about some books that we can agree on and put it in the description. And uh, um, you know, I thank y'all for listening. I want y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what y'all think. Uh, you know, we're looking forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, I will be establishing a community soon. You know, maybe putting some pictures up and getting your feedback of what you think would would make this channel better. Um, so remember, don't just watch it, live it. Peace, much love. See you.